I have some very, very exciting news for you guys. The bump is getting huge. I have really not done anything yet to prepare for this baby. I feel like I'm just trying to let go of my expectations again, which is a daily process for me. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. What a sound. And welcome to today's vlog. I thought I would do like a little weekend in the life this weekend just because we have some fun things going on. I'm currently getting myself ready and about to go get the kids ready because we are doing my maternity photos today. It's a good thing that we are doing this today because I'm officially 32 weeks pregnant and the bump is getting huge. And I feel like there's a sweet spot to do photos between like 28 and 32 weeks because after a certain point, you really do just get so big and the photo shoot itself becomes just like tiring and you're out of breath the whole time. And I remember with my first, I waited until I was like 37 or 38 weeks pregnant and I felt like I was gonna literally go into labor on the beach when we were taking the photos. And I promised myself that I would not do that again. So. I am making it just under the mark for myself at 32 weeks. And I'm really excited because we're working with the photographer that came and did our newborn photos with Jude in our home after he was born. And they turned out so beautiful, very just like classic and film looking photography. So she's on her way here. She's gonna be here in like 20 minutes and I still have to finish getting myself ready, getting the kids ready. I don't know what Jared's gonna wear, but we gotta pull it all together quick. I love the family photos at home, but it is hard because you have to have your entire house photo ready as well. And I can promise you that that is not the case this morning. I just had to shove a bunch of stuff into our like bedroom bathroom to try and make this space look presentable in case we shoot in here. So things have been a little bit wild this morning, but I'm sure the photos are gonna turn out great. I'm about to go and get the kids dressed, but for Jude, I think I'm gonna do these denim overalls because I just love a baby boy in overalls. It's so sweet. And then either this knit kind of sweater underneath it or this little button up, depending on what shirt Jared's gonna wear. And then for Viv, I just bought this dress for her for Easter and I thought it would be so cute for photos today as well. It's from Zara. It's got like the little eyelet detailing on it and I thought the top was just so beautiful. So I think I'm gonna do her hair in like a high slick bun for her look. Everyone's gonna be barefoot. And then for myself, I am wearing this dress from Lulu's. It's like a really beautiful gingham dress that has kind of like the empire waistband but then ruching at the top, puffy sleeves. The back of it is so beautiful although your bra raw definitely can peek out here and there so I'm gonna have to be mindful of that today but this dress is so stunning you guys have probably seen it on my channel a couple times now the tricky thing is it sells out literally every single time I link it so I'll try and put a link for it if there's any still in stock but that is what I am wearing and then for Jared I think I want to keep a similar color scheme so maybe something like that and then maybe like a light wash jean to kind of match what Jude is wearing but I don't know if these two things are too similar or if that's cute i'm gonna just have to see what it looks like when it's on them handsome boy <laughs> he's trying to hug you bud <laughs> I feel like I'm just sitting down to catch my breath now because, oh my goodness, that was just like a wild experience trying to get a one and two year old to cooperate. The last time that we would have done family photos would have been when I announced this pregnancy and that was pre-Jude walking. But he was literally up and running out of the frame every five seconds as was our oldest. So <laughs> I hope that at least some of those turned out. We did some in front of that like backdrop in the living room. We did some kind of around the kitchen table and some just on our bed but by the end of it, our kids were just so done. After we wrapped everything up, I gave the kids a super quick lunch and then just got them down for quiet time with Jared. And I am now just about to have my own lunch because I have not eaten anything today. It is after 2 p.m. and I never ended up having breakfast this morning because I kept telling myself that after I got myself ready, the house 
ready, the kids ready for the photos that I would eat then so that I could have like hot food, which I feel like it's fair to want to eat your food hot. Issue is that that time never came because we just rolled right into things. So I highly advise against waiting this long to eat when you are pregnant, but I'm about to have my lunch. The other thing that I haven't done yet today is take my prenatal. So I'm gonna do that as well. Being pregnant, I get questions from you guys all the time about what prenatal I love, which ones I find work best for me. And I have absolutely loved the Ritual Essential Prenatal. And for anyone that has never heard of Ritual before, it's the first prenatal multivitamin that's been made traceable with clinically studied key ingredients to help support those key nutrient levels for a healthy pregnancy. Across my three pregnancies, I have now tried many different prenatals and I ended up landing and really sticking with Ritual because I found that especially in my first trimester, it was so gentle on my stomach. This prenatal has something called a delayed release design. So basically it bypasses your stomach and actually dissolves in the small intestine. And not only is that the best place for nutrient absorption, it also really helps if you have a weaker stomach or are just feeling like your stomach is sick in general throughout your pregnancy. It also has like a minty or citrusy essence, which is so much better than that like fishy taste that you typically get with a prenatal multivitamin. And one of the other amazing things about it is that all of the ingredients are clean and high quality in their bioavailable forms. But Ritual is also very open to sharing about what ingredients are in their products and why they are there. So you can find information on all of the sources, the ingredients, the suppliers. And I think all of those things just give me so much peace of mind that this is the best prenatal for myself and for my baby. If you are currently pregnant or are planning for pregnancy soon, I highly recommend Ritual. It's so nice that it's a subscription and it just comes straight to my door every month and I don't have to actually remember placing an order every time. And Ritual has a discount for viewers of my channel as well. So if you're looking to test it out, you can go to ritual.com slash Beth Grace Moore and you can actually save 25% off of your first purchase. So go and check it out. I think you guys are going to love it. And thank you so much to Ritual for working with me on today's video. Speaking of the whole being 32 weeks pregnant thing, I realized the other day that I have really not done anything yet to prepare for this baby. I have been having so many Braxton Hicks and feeling like it's too early for this, like what is going on? And then kind of realized in checking my baby app that I'm actually a lot farther ahead than I thought that I was. So I've been trying to just get my crap together in the past couple of days. I recently made a note on my phone with just all of the like pre baby to do's I need to accomplish. So I have a list of all the things I need to buy for baby, which I just started like checking some of those things off this past week. General to do's for baby, which I think I might just try and do like one big nesting day and get a bunch of the stuff done, like pulling up the car seat and cleaning it out, resetting up the bassinet in our room. But then I also wrote down a bunch of like house to do's because one of the things that I feel like is hitting me more this time than any other time is just realizing like how little time you have to get your house in order once you have a newborn, especially because we're gonna be adjusting to life with three. I feel like if there's anything that has been outstanding on my list of like changing out the knobs in the kitchen and all of those things that are not really important to do before a baby comes, but like I just personally know that they're not going to get done if I don't do them before she comes. So I made a list of those. And then one of the other things I'm trying to decide if I do this time is like outsourcing a deep clean because something that I did last time was take all of that on personally of having the house be deep cleaned and the backyard be like all ready for fall and I just feel like my body was so physically exhausted from all of those things going into labor. I'm trying to decide if it would be worth it to outsource a deep clean of just a few things that I don't really want to do myself before baby comes. Washing all of the walls, the baseboards. Obviously I can do some of those things, but I'm looking at my lists and just getting like overwhelmed by everything and trying to figure out what I can outsource. So if you've ever done that, let me know and let me know what things actually made sense to outsource. In the past, when I've outsourced cleaners, I feel like they've left and my husband and I have just looked around and been like, it looks very similar to what it looks like when I do it myself. And so I feel like I want to really focus it on the specific things that I don't like doing or are really physically hard or would be the best like bang for my buck. So let me know what you think. This weekend, I also really want to just start tidying some of the spaces up so that when I do that big nesting day, 
it's kind of already ready to go because we are going to have baby girl in our room for the first ideally like six months and i really like just being able to use the dresser that jared and i already have in there as like the main change table and spot where we house all the diapers wipes clothing things like that i feel like when they're so little you really are roommates with them and it's easier for me to have all that in our room versus the kids rooms especially because they're going to be like sleeping and having naps in those spaces to make it most accessible i'm going to do it all in that main dresser so that is one big thing on my weekend to-do list is to just get those drawers cleaned out to make it a lot easier for myself when I actually start to like nest and put all of the diapers and wipes and like washed baby clothes into them. It is now the next day. I just finished up with Viveta class. I'm about to go home and grab Jude, stroller, all of the essentials because today is actually my mom's birthday and I'm going to meet up with my mom and my sister at an antique store. We don't all live in the same town but we're going to meet up at one to go antiquing for the morning because she loves antiquing I love antiquing my sister loves it I feel like we both just really got that from her and that is like her ideal way to spend a day so we're all gonna go antiquing together she just has such an eye for it and it's more helpful for me to know what is actually worth getting because with antiques it can be kind of tricky and it can be really overpriced for certain things but she's just got again the eye to know what's worth buying I'm looking forward to it because Jared and I are looking for a photo to put above our new bed i showed you guys in my last vlog the little like picture light that i got and i really want to get an antique photo to put under that because i want to mix together more of the like antique and modern elements so fingers crossed i can find something today and fingers crossed it's not a million dollars because antiques can be so expensive but i'm gonna go get jude and then we will go to the antique store I am back from the antique market. I wish I could say that I had like a whole antique market haul for you guys to share right now, but I did not buy anything. Sometimes I have to manage my expectations and emotions when I go into those spaces because there are so many beautiful things and so many things that I would love to purchase but do not have like 400, 500, 600 dollars to purchase right now. Antiquing is one of those things that needs to be a hobby over the course of like years and I think that that's what I've seen my mom do really well and there were a couple of frames that I think would have looked beautiful <laughs> over our bed but are just obviously not in the budget so I didn't personally buy anything. My sister and I did go in on a frame that my mom bought. I also just realized that I have a Disney band-aid on and that's on having a two-year-old daughter but the frame that she got was really beautiful and I know that she'll style it really well. I feel like this morning my brain has just been swirling though because I've been thinking about why I feel so overwhelmed when it comes to like nesting and having our house ready and why my emotions of like what our house looks like are getting tied up in that and i wanted to talk about it for a minute because i feel like a lot of you guys would relate i think that there is a very natural feminine desire to make our house feel like a home and so much of what is tied into that is like the beauty of our home and the way that it makes us feel and i think for me personally that's why all of a sudden before i'm about to have a baby I'm like wanting frames on my walls and I'm wanting like new furniture pieces and to decorate the house in a different way And I think it's also why in my head so much of my thoughts have been recently taken up by like Getting Jude's toddler room done and the girls room makeover done and putting this pressure on myself to have all of that done in two months But I think this morning I finally realized like all of that desire is okay It just doesn't need to happen on a timeline like a house doesn't become a home on a timeline well maybe unless you're rich and you can afford to do it that way but for most people making a house a home takes a very long time and so that is why after two years of being in our home there are still so many things that I want to get done I've talked about painting our kitchen literally since the day we moved in but it just takes time to do all those things and I feel like in this nesting process there is that natural desire to want to make our house be home before baby arrives 
lives, but we have to remember that that happens over time and that what home looks like for our baby is very different than what it looks like for us and our expectations. Like we are home for our babies. And so I don't know if that resonates with anybody, but I just have found like weirdly more than ever with this baby, I have wanted our house to feel homey and like decorated to where I want it to be and have put a lot of pressure on myself to have that happen. I feel like I'm just trying to let go of my expectations again, which is a daily process for me. I did, however, check one thing off of my list, courtesy of my mom, who literally gave me something on her birthday. But I've been saying forever that I want something up on this wall in the corner here. And we have one of these in our like living room between the playroom and it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna hang that here and get some candles up on it. And the search for a frame over the bed continues. Anyway, I need to be less chatty because none of that is even why I am in my room right now. I'm in my room because the kids are down for quiet time and I wanted to check off one thing on my list that I've been feeling overwhelmed about. I think the thought of like putting all her clothes in and having all the diapers and wipes and all of that stuff feels so overwhelming because right now it's full of junk. So I'm gonna go through all of that right now. But before we do all of that, I have some very, very exciting news for you guys. I'm sure that you might have a general idea of what I'm about to say, but I had a midwife appointment this past week and we have confirmed that baby girl has flipped. She is head down, she is no longer breech, and I am just like so happy about that. We have been praying into it like crazy. We've had our community praying into it like crazy. I've gotten messages from you guys that were praying into it like crazy. And essentially what that means is that we can now plan for a home birth again, which was kind of something that was up in the air before she flipped. It did take some work. She hung out breech for a little while after I found out that she was breech around 28 weeks. But as of 32 weeks, she is head head down and I have rented the birth tub, which is very exciting. It makes all of this feel so much more real. So I feel like I'm able to mentally just switch into birth prep a little bit more easily than I was before. It just felt like everything was a big question mark and I was getting a lot of like mixed messages of like, I couldn't get my baby to flip after 30 weeks. Like make sure that you're doing everything that you can. And some people that were like, my baby flipped literally like right before I went into labor. So. I don't know I was trying to manage all of that just like mentally but I did a lot of the spinning baby stuff I feel like that was the most helpful thing was just like the forward leaning inversions but the one other thing that I did and I found out that she had flipped pretty shortly after but I didn't do it consistently so I don't know was Cairo I went to one Cairo appointment and we did the Webster technique and to be honest I don't know a lot about it so I'm not going to really go into detail as to like what that entails but that is the method that she was trying that I know spinning babies also encourages when it comes to Cairo and shortly after I did find out from the midwife just with belly mapping that her head was down so again there's still a slight chance that she could flip back at this point but I think it's like seven percent or something like that of babies are still breech at this point and I'm sure it's an even smaller percentage of babies that are head down and then flip back again after after 32 weeks just because they do start to run out of room so I am very happy to share that news. Thank you guys so much for praying and for all of your kind messages and encouragements, especially to those that had breech babies flip or breech babies that did not flip and just sharing your experience of how that was still okay for you. I feel like that did give me a lot of peace of mind in the waiting process. When I found out, I could not wait to tell you guys because I knew that you would be just as excited as I am. So home birth is a go as of right now and we've got some stuff to to do so let's empty these drawers out so it's these first three rows that i'm planning on using for baby stuff oh gosh this is like so full <laughs> this is the drawer that i mentioned sometimes i'll just pop like brand stuff into when it arrives because a lot of the times i just like don't know where to put it right off the hop i also just have some really random stuff in here so like the nix it i bought this to use instead of tampons and pads because so many of you guys had recommended it to me after i had jude and I was gonna try it literally the weekend that I found out I was pregnant. So I don't actually know where it is, but this is the box and I can probably recycle it. Right, the 
top drawer is clear for now good step the next zone that I want to tackle is this area here in our closet because I think I want to store my camera stuff here. What I've been doing for the last couple of months is keeping a lot of it just in this drawer because it's been so handy to have it right here. I don't need to go into any other closets or rooms of the house to access what I need, especially when I'm doing like early vlogs. But as you can see, this is not a good way to keep camera gear organized. I need to just like see what other people that have the same kind of job as me are doing because I don't have an office space and so right now finding places to store this stuff is just like super challenging. But my thought is that if I deal with whatever is happening here because I'm not really using it for anything practical right now anyway, is that I could at least keep my camera bag here and then have my stuff be in the camera bag or utilize like some sort of basket system. So let's just pull all of this down and see what we're working with to begin. I don't need this right now, but I will soon. That is my nursing pillow from BB Hug Me. And then for the rest of this stuff, I don't really know what it is. This should not be here, but our kids kept pulling it out and playing with like every single tiny piece in here when it was accessible to them in the living room. So I'm not really sure where the best place for it is, but for right now, it's not gonna be here. Now that those are fully emptied, I think the last one I need to go through is this one, which has a bunch of my husband's random stuff, like bathing suits and things like that. But I'm gonna have him do that because I don't know where he wants that stuff to go right now. And I'm gonna start putting some of my baby stuff in here. Most of it is still in the garage. I haven't really brought anything out yet and I haven't washed anything either, but I'm gonna put my wild bird wrap in there for now. Might as well just put this birth book in here for now. And then I do have like a couple of postpartum things that I've already purchased. Probably going to do a more like in-depth video at some point talking all about like labor prep, postpartum prep, all that fun stuff. But for now, this is all that I really have for the baby. So we've got some ordering to do. Hello friends, it is now the next day, so a Sunday. We got home from church a couple hours ago. Jared spoke a great message this morning. Needless to say, everyone in the house is currently asleep because he was exhausted this afternoon, the kids were exhausted. So I have a very quiet house and it's currently 3 p.m. so it's a little bit early but I thought what better time what better opportunity to make dinner in peace than right now so I am going to do a whole chicken dinner tonight I got a chicken on sale at the grocery store last week this whole thing for seven bucks which is just like such a steal because the amount of meat that you get on these is so much better than just buying a package of chicken breast for like 15 or 20 bucks and then i also have the bones after that so i can turn that into a soup tomorrow so sunday is the best time i find to make a chicken dinner and it's also going to be kind of like a fridge clean out dinner tonight because i usually do my grocery orders on sunday nights haven't done that yet for this week and there's a bunch of stuff in the fridge like this celery that's kind of on its way out i have some carrots that honestly froze a little bit in the back of the fridge so i'm currently letting them thaw and hoping that they'll still work for dinner tonight there's actually a lot of spices that i need to reorder right now i don't have any like fresh thyme or rosemary but dried will work just fine for a chicken dinner and then the other thing is that i thought i might try doing a stuffing tonight just using some leftover bread i typically would do potatoes or like mashed potatoes with a whole chicken dinner but my family doesn't really like mashed potatoes which is crazy to me because mashed potatoes and gravy are so good but i think it's a texture thing for both of the kids right now they're just not interested in it and my husband has never been a big mashed potato fan and i feel like when i have chicken dinner i just want something to soak up all the gravy and having roast potatoes is just not the same so i'm gonna take this old bread see if i can turn it into some stuffing and just throw together dinner with whatever is currently in the fridge.
not one to usually vlog from the comfort of my bed at the end of the day, but it's been a day and I'm 32 weeks pregnant, so I am making an exception for myself. I just finished meal planning and getting ourselves like ready for this next week from a grocery perspective. I have a whole YouTube video all about meal planning for our family of four, how I do that, tools that I use, the systems that I've put in place to make that easier for myself, but I do all of our grocery shopping online typically. It's very rare these days that I will go in to a grocery store unless we are doing a Costco trip or I need to pick up something quick. I thought it would be fun to share with you guys the different recipes that I have planned for this week and kind of what I'm doing for dinners. This week we are hosting twice. The first time that we are hosting is tomorrow night. So we are having a couple from church over and for that I'm going to be making this like mango chutney curry chicken that I've done in the past. It's a crock pot meal, so it's a very easy to do, kind of like a set it and forget it thing, but it is so good, you guys. I'll have to share a link in the description box because the last time that I made it, Jared was like, this is one of the best things you've literally ever made. And I was like, I put the least effort into this <laughs> compared to like some of the other stuff that I've made, but it really just was that good. The flavors were amazing. So I'm gonna do that again tomorrow night when we have company and then do a salad with it as well. On Tuesday, we have something going on for church in the evening, so I need dinner to be very quick that night. Because I had the whole chicken cooked today, my game plan is to, tomorrow at some point during the day, make that into chicken noodle soup. And then between the leftovers that we'll have from Monday night and the chicken noodle soup that I'm going to be making as well, I think we can do something really quick just eating what's in in the fridge on Tuesday night. On Wednesday, I have a bunch of chicken drumsticks that we still need to finish that were in the freezer. Um, so we're gonna do oven baked chicken drumsticks with potatoes and asparagus. On Thursday, I think we're going to do a taco night. So I got one big package of ground beef and my plan is to stretch that over a couple of different meals this week. So I got everything that we need for tacos. And then on Friday, we are hosting again. And on Friday, it's like, a much larger group that's gonna be here. There's probably going to be anywhere from like 20 to 30 of us, I think for that. So it's going to be a potluck. So that makes dinner nice and easy on Friday. And then Saturday, because I'll have the leftover beef um, from the tray that I ordered for the beef tacos, I'm going to do a cowboy casserole. That is a recipe that our family loves. Also do share this recipe in a video that I created all about easy weeknight meals. So I will link that here for anyone that wants to go check it out. But that is the game plan for the week. The grocery order this week was 150, which if you've seen my meal planning video, you know that my budget for weekly groceries is 125. Um, but I did need to order two different packages of like freezer bags again this week, which technically doesn't fall into our grocery budget. We have like a separate budget for household items, but I just placed that order and it will be here in the morning between seven and 8 a.m. It is honestly the nicest thing to just wake up and have all of the groceries just be there so I can move them right into the fridge and we just have kind of like a seamless transition into having our food for the week. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed spending a little weekend in the life with me. I also wanted to remind you before you head out today that if you want to check out Ritual's prenatal vitamins or honestly any of their vitamins, I highly recommend them. You guys can save 25% off of your first order with them if you go to ritual.com slash Beth Grace Moore. I've also put a little QR code on the screen for that. So if you have a smartphone, you can just hold the camera from your phone up to that and it will take you straight through to the website to make it super easy for you. So thank you so much to Ritual for working with me on this video. Thank you guys again for being here and until my next video, I love you guys, I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon. Good night. Mm -hmm.